Welcome back. Well, Morocco's elections are being seen as something of a benchmark within the country, a chance to show it's embracing real democracy. But with a wave of recent bombings in Casablanca and al-Qaeda trying to expand its influence in North Africa, the government's been cracking down on the militants. So how will the outside world be viewing these elections? Well, joining us again, our guests from Rabat, Mustafa El Kalfi, political advisor to the PJD party, Mohamed Benjaloun, he's a political analyst, and Rukia Ashmal, an activist in the Youth Forum. Mustafa El Kalfi, let me start with you. How do you think the outside world will be looking in on these elections? And do you think the West will be worried about the Islamist agenda of the PJD party? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, France, Spain, uh, Britain, United States are looking for us as a model, as an alternative to the radicals, as an agent for more democratic, uh, more democratization in our country. I think that the United States uh, try to take a credit that we have no, we don't have any problem with Islam. We don't have any problem with moderate political party w which have an Islamic reference. Only you have a problem with uh, some radicals and some extremists. And for this reason, I think that the United States, uh, mainly and other uh, Western countries, are looking to not to encourage but to to tolerate this experience and uh, don't show any. Uh, rage or any th any positive, any negative uh, signs against us. Uh, Mohammed Benjaloun, it's an interesting point uh, that Mustafa makes there because at a time uh, when Al Qaeda is growing its operations and its influence in the Maghreb, I mean, how do you think King Mohammed will deal with the growing Islamist popularity in Morocco? Well, I think first we have to look at the, um, I would say, the religious mosaic in the country. We are a country, as I said earlier, that is following a very moderate trend as far as Islam is concerned. Uh, it, it is making a very moderate reading of the Islamic text, which is the sacred text, Quran. That's on one hand. On the other hand, let's not forget that the king is also the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minin. This is very important. So he is also a religious authority. And for all these considerations, I think that the parties that accept to play the political game with the king know perfectly the role they have to play, the role they can be assigned, and the change they can bring. That's still, I mean, what has always been said and repeated as a slogan in Morocco, change within continuity rather than radical change with the past and I believe that the king by giving I mean all his power all his support to the next government even if it is an Islamic government is just telling everybody inside and outside Morocco that he accepts the people's will the people want change let them have change and that's it Rukia Ashma, let me uh, put that point to you because it's widely accepted uh, that Morocco is a moderate state. I mean, many say it's Israel's best friend in the Arab world. So how do you think the outside world, particularly the West um, and the Americans, will be viewing these elections? OK, as a youth, uh, we uh, all uh, look for uh, the programs for uh, the promises of uh, political uh, parties, even if uh, of uh, the, the leftists or uh, rightists or Islamic. So uh, what do you believe is not for uh, the theories. They are uh, believing uh, on uh, the programs, on uh, what he can uh, be like reality on uh, at the future. Uh, you don't believe uh, uh, same persons in the theories. They are uh, believing uh, on uh, programs, on uh, what we can be, like do, like uh, like uh, uh, reality. And what I can see for uh, for uh, Islamic visions, that uh, mean we are uh, awfully optimistic uh, for uh, the change, for the new change, and uh, to give a chance for another who can't, uh, who haven't a chance before uh, to take part in the government. Uh, Rukia, let me stay with you for a second because I want to ask you, how worried do you think the government is about the rise of militancy and extremism in Morocco, particularly amongst the youth, and you work with them? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, as uh, you, uh, uh, many people uh, they say, they uh, like Moroccan youths, they are uh, extremely not work 
not participate, not uh, present in uh, legislative elections. But uh, we say that uh, more uh, than 28,000 that uh, they are working like volunteers on uh, on a year uh, in the schools. So that means this is an uh, important number that uh, we can consider that uh, part that youth participate in many files like uh, files of schools, files of uh, of camps. That means it's a good participation for youth, not only for uh, uh, election, legislative elections, but it's a good uh, participation uh, as all. Mustafa, let me come back to you because some observers say the recent wave of suicide bombings has put your party, the PJD, on the defensive. I mean, where does your party stand on cracking down on the militants? Do you think that strengthening Morocco's Islamic identity is the best way to fight terrorism, perhaps? Uh, of course, we, with, we, we are calling for a global approach in dealing with the terrorist problem in, in our country. We need first to enhance security measures to deal with this problem. But besides, we need to tackle social and economic problems that give the seeds to this caution. And also we need to, to fight the misuse of some religious principles and values and ideas who, uh, which they are used by these groups to legitimize their acts and their attacks. So for us, we, we are calling for a global approach and we now we in our electoral platform we've presented a clear agenda of how to deal with this problem how to enhance our security without undermining the democratic uh, process in uh, our country this is the first point the second point we we can't make uh, two choice uh, take it or uh, uh, or, or not take it between Islam or, uh, or not Islam. We, we should be clear or we should clarify this question that Islam represents the religion of this country and we need to take it into account when we are fighting terrorism but also fighting corruption, right. dealing with the quality of education and other stuff. Okay, I want to bring in back Mohammed Benjaloun here for a second because it's well known that the PJD uh, is a fierce opponent um, of US Middle East policies. I mean, how would you see Morocco's relationship with the US developing if the PJD got into the governing coalition? Well, um I think that here uh, I would like just to say something that a political analyst said before me. He said that opposition is the most comfortable position. In other words, when somebody is in the opposition, he can actually indulge in advancing things that need to be put to the test once he's in power. The PJD, of course, has always expressed uh, I mean, its opposition to some of the political, uh, I would say, positions, practices of the United States, of Morocco's position vis-a-vis -vis these practices. But once in power, I believe that the PJD will have to become more realistic and have to see things in the light of new, I would say, situations. And for that reason, uh, I believe the PJD being a moderate party, whether we like it or not, though it is having an Islamic referential, will perhaps readapt, readjust its view to a good number of things. This, of course, will not perhaps jeopardize its positions, its view, at least seen from here. But for the rest, I believe that uh, it will deal with the realistic view, I mean, with the realistic way, sorry, with, with, with the situation, especially with the U.S. Uh, policy in the Middle East and the MENA region in general. Rukia Ashmal, from the uh, youth movement's point of view, if the PJD does get into the coalition, um, what sort of changes should they be pushing for? Uh, I uh, see before that the youths, Moroccan youths, uh, need the change, need to be the change, and need to be uh, to take a part of this uh, change. This is the first. The second thing, uh, we are, uh, as I said, we are awfully optimistic for this uh, this uh, new scenario, as I see. Uh, and the second thing, that means if Islamic or uh, PGD uh, take part in the governments, it's a new thing for the, the youths because we, like the youths, we are needing not only uh, promises, we, we need uh, uh, the engagement after, after this uh, uh, promises, we need the, also the reality after and the follow up for these programs. Okay, Mustafa, uh, a final thought from you. Whatever comes right. out of this vote, do you think the government will still be hamstrung because the absolute power lies with the king? Your final thought. 
we, we are, let me clarify this question uh, again. We think that we should have a new constitution in cooperation with the king and uh, without reforming the role of the parliament in legislation, in drafting legislation, in auditing the work of the government, in oversighting all public affairs institution, uh, policies, we don't have much power to do something real for our country. So we are looking for a new constitution. And without having a new constitution, without reforming the current constitutional reform, we can't expect much thank you. Okay, and on that note, uh, we have to leave it there. Mustafa El Kalfi, Mohammed Benjaloun, and Rukia Ashmal, thank you very much indeed. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and your suggestions, of course. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. That's insidestory at aljazeera.net. From the whole team here, goodbye and thanks for watching.